too much, right? <laughs> now, what kind of a church are y'all going to today? <laughs> That's my question to y'all guys right there. And quit saying I look like Joe Dirt. I don't appreciate that. <laughs> Yeah, that is my generation. You got me. All of these things that I put on my head are on the outside of me, ain't they? Baseball cap. I put on a baseball cap. Does that make me a baseball player? Put on a cowboy hat. Does that mean I can ride bulls? I put on a dog hat. Does that mean I got to bark to communicate? Although I do it sometimes when I need something for my wife, for sure. Today I'm preaching very briefly about who am I, identity theft. Identity theft. You see, the world wants to put and saddle us with all different kind of man-made identities. From the time we just, just barely little and our mama says we should be preppy. And so she buys all the things with the alligators on them, Okay. And then she tries to mold us into those kind of things because all of her friends will like her if she does that. Identity theft. Luke chapter 4, verse 3 and 4 says it this way. Jesus gets baptized. And instead of going out after he gets baptized and coming out and starting to preach, you know what he does? Goes up into the desert, 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 desert. I like the reverb, reverb, reverb. He goes out into the desert because the Spirit sent him into the desert. And while he's there, guess what? Satan comes to see him. Oh, that was just Jesus that Satan went to see. He would never come to see me. That's a lie. Satan has come to see you since before you were born. Generationally, he's tried to see you. He sent his demons to, to hassle with you and jack with you and try and give you a false identity. Most of America thinks that our identity is in what we do. Oh, I'm a, I'm a coal miner. I work over there. I'm a mechanic. I, I work over there. I'm a musician. I'm a singer. Whatever it might be. That, then we say that's our identity. That is not your identity. Amen. That may be a gift that God has given you to, to use as his son or daughter, which is your true identity. And we live from this false identity source. So I need, to, I need you to understand, Dalton, how deep this goes. The very first thing that ever happened to Jesus directly from Satan was this. Satan came to him and he said these words, Jamie, if you are the daughter of God, if you are the son of God, if you are the friend of God, if you are holy, if you are the saint, if you are all of other God's promises, then turn this, turn this rock into, into some bread. But see what the, the key to this thing is the very first part of what the devil was trying to do. He was trying to slide that right by him, okay, like he tries to slide these things right by us. The devil wants us to be focusing on the things that we do all the time instead of who we are as his children, as his, as his friends, as his body. And, and, and you can clearly see this in America because our time is so occupied in our occupation. In seeking the very things that Harvey destroyed and got drug out to the curb. But yet, how many thousands, hundreds of thousands of hours were used to acquire that junk that ended up being trash in the ditch? If we would, if our priorities would change and we would come to the place where the king is the king, 24-7, 365, this is what I do. I'm on fire for the Lord Jesus. This is the platform that I'm in. This is where I'm doing it, through my music, through my school, through my job, whatever it is. Then that's the place I work from. That's my source. That's my power. Everything would change. In some of the most impoverished nations, Jesus is shining the greatest and the brightest. In Africa. The demons are running away from that place, and they don't have anything but some Rocco's, man, and they are going to town for Jesus tens of thousands at a time, and they ain't worried about their hut and trying to get their hut just arranged just right with the right kind of granite kitchen top over there. Yeah. They ain't interested in those kind of things. If you are the children of God, the children of Jesus right here, 
Are you? Yes or no? Yes, I am. Then we begin to live from that source right now. Let's go to Mark chapter 8, verses 27 through 30. Jesus is talking to Peter and his disciples. This is out of the NIV. Mark chapter 8, verse 27 through 30. Jesus said to his disciples, Jesus and his disciples went on to villages around Caesarea Philippi. On the way, he asked them, hey, who do people say that I am? Now, ain't this cool how Jesus was setting up the disciples? I love it. Hey, what are those guys saying about me on Facebook over there? Hey, I'm going to my 15-year class reunion. wonder what those people are saying about me. You know, she got a nose job already, too. She's been coloring her hair since she was in eighth grade. Jesus says to the disciples, who do people say that I am? Okay. He was testing the waters, wasn't he? And here's what people said. I find this amazing. People tried to hang a false identity on Jesus. They said, well, some say that you're Elijah. Now, Elijah was a guy that nobody listened to, by the way. In his time, nobody would pay any attention to him. God would talk to him, tell him exactly what was going to happen. He would go and tell the people, and they wouldn't listen. And it would happen, and he would tell them again, and they wouldn't listen. What hard heads. See, people wanted him to be like Elijah because Elijah wasn't working in the eternal power, was he, like Jesus did. God wanted that power to come through, but the people wouldn't let it happen. Are there people around you, look at me. Are there people around you, and it might be yourself, it might be your chase for money, it might be your greed over things, it might be your your pursuit of popularity or popularity within your family. Are you letting people tell you who you are? Some say Elijah. Some say John the Baptist. Now, John the Baptist, when Jesus got to him, John the Baptist knew who he was. He said, I'm going to baptize you with water, but there's going to be one coming in a little while. And he's going to baptize you with the Spirit, with power. Would you like some of that? We didn't just baptize with water last Wednesday night. We've been baptized in the Holy Ghost in Jesus' name. That's why the Bible talks about baptisms and not just baptism. And so we just ask you, Lord God, to baptize us in the Spirit right now in Jesus' name. Finally, he looked at Peter and he said, who do you say that I am? What about you? Who do you say I am? And Peter said, you are the Christ. That revelation did not come from Jesus' lips. It came from the Spirit himself. And the Spirit is giving utterance to you right now. Can you hear it? Can you hear the Spirit saying, you're my child. You're my, you're my daughter, and I'm so pleased with you. Oh, come home to me. There's this story about David, and he's, and he's near this cave, and this, this hurricane is coming, and the winds are coming, and the rains are coming, and the Scripture says in the book of Psalms that, 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 that the, the voice of the Lord wasn't in the wind, and it wasn't in the rain. It was in the whisper in the back of the cave. There was a whisper at Harvey for all of those people. When the storm subsided, they began to see what was important and what was not important, and their priorities changed, and the whisper of Almighty God was upon them. I am the most important thing. You have sold me out to other gods, but I am here for you, and I never left you, and we're going to start this thing all over again in Jesus' name. Would you like to be part of that reunion? Let me tell you what America does to try to give you a false identity. I'm going to take us back to 9-11, 2001. Ashley said it before. She said, the thief comes to steal. Well, one of the main things that he wants to steal from you is your identity. She's right. As she was praying, the devil wants to steal your identity and hand you depression. And hand you all of this pain. But if you know who you are, not just in your head, but in your person, 
there will be a power in your life that's undeniable and unstoppable in Jesus' name. That no matter what comes against you, I know who I am in Christ Jesus. And I ain't going nowhere, by the way. And you can't lie to me anymore. And I'm not going to listen to you anymore. And when it gets tough in the storm, you are still rejoicing and celebrating. 9-11 happened and all of hell came, right? Those agents of the devil came over here to destroy, didn't they? And to steal. And here's what happened. Prior to 9-11, Americans were confident. They were unbeatable, undefeatable. That's how we looked at ourselves. We were patriotic and proud. We were faithful and we were strong. I begin to think about my own children who were young at that time. In, you know, around 10, 8 to 10, something like that. They don't know the America that I knew growing up in the 70s and 80s. They don't know of that confidence. They think that normalcy is uh, what we live in now with being paranoid and taking our shoes off at the airport and all that kind of thing, which is fear-driven. Satan's job was to give us fear. And I ain't receiving it anymore in the name of Jesus, by the way, okay? I'm not, I'm not scared to cry out the name of Jesus everywhere that I go in Jesus' name. I don't have to be tolerant of people that don't understand. Because whenever this fear came and became uh, the, the moniker of America and became everything that we talked about, well, I can't really drive. What if I drive over there and the plane's going to crash and blah, 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 blah. And everything we saw, we began to see through the lens of fear. And it is a lie. Now, I'm not just talking to your head right now. I'm talking to the place in your spirit where you've allowed the fear spirit to have any power. In Jesus' name, I take authority over every fear spirit that's tried to get a hold of these treasures right now in Jesus' name. I cancel your power fear. I cancel all of your whispers fear. I cancel all of your crashes fear in Jesus' name. I cancel every voice of the media that tries to throw it on you. I bind you up, fear spirit, and I cast you into the great abyss right now in Jesus' name. We don't live from a place of doubt. We live from a place of promise in Jesus' name. If doubt, you see, you have to understand that the word if and the concept of doubt is the silent killer of faith. So we go around and we don't even voice our doubt, but we let it have place in our mind and in our hearts. And then we don't have a brave heart anymore. We got a wimpy heart. God doesn't want you to have that in Jesus' name. The spirits that you just cast out, the fear spirit, they can't hear your thoughts. They can plant thoughts, those demon spirits. They can plant thoughts, but they can't, they can't hear your thoughts. That's why we have to take authority like this in Jesus' name. 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 Fear. 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 Get out of me. In Jesus' name. I'm a child of the king. That's my identity, and nobody can move me from that place. I'm a daughter of King Jesus. Nobody's going to change me from that place. That's who I am. Now, you can take authority like that all day long, and believe me, your confidence is going to come back in Jesus' name. False identities of our life ex- with life experience as the source. So I want, to, I want to talk to you about this. If we say that my, li- li- my life experience is the s- source of who I am and what I know, okay? So that's all that I know is just who I am. So I'm just living from my own. The things that I've seen, the things that I've studied or I know, the things that I've done and the people that I've met and all of those influences, if I've just lived from my life experience as a source, do you know how thin that would be? First of all, I'm kind of an old man. I'm 55 now. But I hadn't seen very much. God's seen it all. I hadn't experienced very much at all. I've I've seen most of America and maybe a few other countries, but he made them all. (laughs) He, he, He designed them and he put them in place. You know, I've swam in the ocean, but he created the ocean. He told the he told the water how far it could go and where the mountains would start right there. You talk about a source of life and power. 
and love and, and eternity. That's where I want to live from. If we live for our, our own life experience, now I'm telling you this because this is how most people do it. They, they start every sentence with this, I feel like, or this is what I think, okay? Why would we bother thinking instead of knowing what God said about everything, about every situation? How would we ever be able to pervert what God knows with our own little take on it, okay? False identity with life experience as the source are limited in scope. In other words, we can't see very far. Limited in time, whereas God is timeless. And they're based in the world and not in eternity. With a false who am I identity, we will live an unbalanced life, uncertain in all the things that we do. But God had a different plan. In Ephesians chapter 4, 14, according to the NIV translation, here's what it says. Maybe this is how you used to live as an infant. I used to live as an infant, letting pride in my own self uh, chart my course and what I thought in life instead of looking to God for all of these sources of power. Are you guys growing up enough to where you can recognize where you stop and God starts? Are you, are you wise enough to say, this is my place and this is where the devil is trying to get me? If we can begin to draw those lines and hear the voices in our heads, in our ears, there's, there's our own voice and our own look in the mirror. Okay, that's one voice that we hear. It's usually a selfish voice. Then there is the voice of Satan that is always going to try to hurt you, that's going to undermine your identity it's trying to take and steal your identity. And then there's going to be the whisper in the cave. Peter, I'm here. Peter, I, I never leave you. I'm just waiting for you to get around to listen to me. Just want you to know you're my son. And nothing can shake you out of my hand. My hands of love, Peter. You can trust me. Oh, you want to run away for a while? Okay, I'll let you go. But I'm going to watch you, and I'll be here when you get through with your listening to the wrong voices, and I'll be here. We put ourselves through turmoil day after day, don't we, doing that? We see our children do it. And then we try to correct their behavior. Listen to me, guys. If we sow in the flesh, that's behavior. Just stop writing on that chalkboard and quit screeching your uh, hand across there. It's driving me crazy. Just just. Just quit wearing that blue hair. And by the way, you need a haircut. Oh, I'm talking to myself. <laughs> Just trying to correct that behavior. We're sowing in the flesh with all these things. But the power is in the spirit. God is teaching you how to war in the spirit and win. Isn't he treasure? In Jesus' name. And you're going to take more and more authority over that. So this says, then we will no longer live as infants. Uh, I want you to know a lot of churches... They let you live as infants pretending like whatever they say, that's your gospel. The gospel according to the preacher. No. I pray that God just pours into you, that his spirit opens up a thirst in you, and he pours into you in everything that you do. That you see, Eric, that you see Jesus working in every step that you take, brother, in Jesus' name. That you see him emptying you out. And that as you read the word of God in the spirit, it comes alive for you. That you don't have to worry about some preacher's interpretation or some, some book's interpretation or some, some other chronology. You just hear it for yourself and let the Spirit teach you. And you begin to sow in the Spirit. Now, if we're going to live by doubt, that means we're going to live by the things that we see. Why did, why did Harvey come? I don't understand why a living God, a loving God, would ever let those things happen. I remember when Job asked a question like that, and God rose up, and I think he met Job with a powerful voice. He asked him this, were you there when I told the seas where to fall and where mountains were to rise? And I believe Job began to shrink back. And I believe during Harvey, a wonderful thing has happened. America has done this instead of this. 
I believe during Harvey, there's been a reprioritization of the things that are important in our lives. It's happening right here in Treasure, by the way, in Jesus' name. What doth it profit a man if he would gain the whole world, lose his soul? Then we will no longer be infants tossed back and forth by the waves and blown here and there by every wind of teaching and cunning and craftiness of people and deceitful scheming of the devil. Today we deal with influencers, the influencers' versions of the truth. Started to use this popular word back uh, in the early aughts called spin. We called people spin doctors. There would be some information that would come in, and all of a sudden uh, the commentators or the news people or the talk radio people would put their spin on it, right? So today we deal with influencers of the truth and their version of the truth. Now we, we don't, back when, when Walter Cronkite said it, dude, that's what was happening, Dan. You understand what I'm saying? Google is trying to shape your identity. Those search engines aren't telling you everything that's out there. They're telling you their liberal, progressive perspective on those things. There has to be a filter on your eyes and in your heart that doesn't receive things that aren't of God in Jesus' name. We're not puppets of the devil anymore, okay? The strings are cut off. Pinocchio is turned into a little boy. Okay, even Pinocchio is the child of the living God, and guess what? His nose ain't so long anymore. The media is trying to tell you how to think and shame you for having faith in Jesus. Not me. How about you? And speak in faith in Jesus' name. See, the, the HR departments and companies, they don't like the name Jesus, especially up north. We got to praise God that we're right here. We got to pray for those other friends up there in Jesus' name, and we got to love the people that are living in these uh, in these places of darkness. That God would change them too. TV has come to decay and define the acceptable morality in America, and it just keeps on going down, doesn't it? Okay. I remember when Love American Style came on back in the '70s. My dad wouldn't let me watch it. I don't blame him. Now that's GTV compared to the things that we have to deal with today. Jesus' name. You know what? The world is the world, and Jesus is Jesus. We got to decide who we're going to listen to. I'm not chunking any rocks at those guys. They're just doing what the devil told them to do. But they're not going to be the devils for forever in Jesus' name. Now there's one hat down here. That's a little different from the rest of them. That's this one right here. It's not just because it's camouflage, although I like camouflage. Can you see me? It's camouflage. I don't know if you can see me. <laughs> Hide and go seek up in the church. It says salt life on it. Now, what's that got to do with my identity and who I am? Who am I? Salt. Hmm. You are the salt of the earth. The things that I've talked about today are salty. The things that I've talked about today are different than the rest of the world. That there is an awareness in you that rises up in you, but it doesn't rise up in some kind of a violent way. It rises up in agape love. In the agape love that was changing. When Dan walked across the street and prayed with his team, and respected those guys that he was with like they're just his brothers and sisters and we're all the same in the sight of God. That's beautiful and it's true. And, and he loved him and he walked across the street and this guy's been looking for two weeks for somebody to help him. Well, Jesus came to help, didn't he? And salt of the earth became to help, right? Because the salt wasn't on the outside like this hat. It was on the inside. I believe that Jesus used this, this, these two terms, salt and light, to, to form an identity in us that I don't know that you've ever thought about or considered. The salt comes on the inside. You are the salt of the earth, okay? Now, if it's coming on the inside, it's becoming part of your identity, isn't it? You are the salt of the earth. You are destined to be different and set apart. You are the salt of the earth. But if a salt loses its saltiness, man, it's good for nothing. Be thrown out, trampled by men. 
Maybe the American church has lost its saltiness some today. Hey, I ain't giving up on them. That's the bride of Christ. Amen. In Jesus' name. They're treasures. We're going to love them. But we ain't church people here. We Jesus people. Is that all right? That's what I'm talking about. Jesus people are the salt of the earth. He's the one that said this. But if the salt loses its saltiness, it's, it's good for nothing but to be thrown out by men. Levi, we're proud of you for being the salt over at Pine Tree High School, brother. Proud of you, Jilly, for being the salt at Pine Tree High School. In Jesus' name. Shane, you're the light of the world. You are the light of the world, man. See, Scripture later on, right in there in Matthew, it starts talking about the eyes. He says, if the eyes are good, the whole body will have light. See, so those eyes have to change for us to have that kind of light. Jesus is the light of the world, right? If Jesus is living outside of you and you're just acting like him and imitating him, you won't be the light of the world. But when you consume Jesus, you become a consumer of the light. You know what? If I'd like swallowed a glow stick right now or something like that, you'd probably see my tonsil right there all the way through there, right? You are the salt of the earth and you are the light of the world. A city on a hill, a treasure on a hill, a Stephanie in her workplace, a Eric everywhere that he walks in Jesus' name, a Chris and his family. A city on a hill can't be hidden, Tammy. Junior, you're going to be that light on that hill. You can't be hidden. Neither does a man or a boy or a young lady or an awesome daughter of the king. Take a lamp. Take that light. Put it under a bowl. See, this is the devil's job to give you the bowl, to quiet you, to put that bush over the light, to, to, to dampen it, to, to, to bring con confusion to you and distraction to you. And instead of being the light, Brian, in Missouri, where you guys are going, bam, bam, bam. He wants to put a bunch of distraction in your way. Throw off the bowl, bro. Throw it off, man. You are the light of the world. Does a man take a bowl and put it over the light? No. Crushes the bowl, man. Crushes it. Puts it on a stand so that all the world may have light. And so let your light shine before man that they will see your good deeds and praise your Father in heaven. Because that's who you are. So all the false identities got to go. Right now in Jesus' name. Because you are the light of the world and you are the salt of the world. That's who you are. Now, if you're having struggle getting there today, praise God, you're in the right place, man. Because we want to love you right into that new identity in Jesus' name to shake off all the false lies that the devil tried to put on you. He can't have you no more in Jesus' name. And he is coming off of you today. I like everybody.